The construction of Indian Navy's S-4 nuclear submarine is reportedly completed, and India will launch the third SSBN submarine in mid-2021, that will be followed by its sea trials by the end of 2021, while the S-4 Star will enter sea trials in 2022. The S-4 and S-4 Star SSBNs have a displacement of 7,000 tons, which is 1,000 tons more than the Airy Hunt class submarine, and they will also have eight missile launch tubes as compared to four launch tubes of the two Airy Hunt class submarines. India has also made significant progress in the development of the 5,000 km range K-5 SLBM, and it is likely to be tested in December 2021, while the work on the MERF-capable 6,000 km range K-6 SLBM project is currently underway, which was cleared by the Modi government in early 2017. After the S-4 and S-4 Star, India will start the construction of the 13,000-ton S-5 nuclear submarine in 2022, that will carry a total of 16K-6 long-range SLBMs, and it will be ready for induction in 2030. India's private sector firm MKU Limited has executed a defence contract with the Chilean National Police Force for 11,700 ballistic helmets along with accessories worth $7.2 million, and is all set to sign a contract extension worth $2.1 million very shortly. MKU has also signed an agreement for joint manufacturing with Chilean state-owned defence manufacturer FAMI, for armour products and electro-optic devices. Larson and Tubro has also delivered a specialized supply vessel worth $11.5 million to the Chilean Navy last week. The Chilean armed forces have also reached out to Indian officials, and have expressed their interest in buying the BrahMos supersonic cruise missile, for which the BrahMos Aerospace has already registered with Chilean armed forces, along with Hindustan Aeronautics Ordnance Factory Board Goa Shipyard and Bharat Earth Movers Limited as the Chilean Defence Forces are undergoing modernization, and there are huge opportunities for the Indian shipyards and other companies. The Ministry of Defence has tasked the Chief of Defence Staff to create the second negative import list, that can be released by the end of next month. The Chief of Defence Staff is currently holding consultation with the industry stakeholders, to discuss the timeframes in which the domestic industry would be ready to supply the larger integrated platforms for the defence forces such as tanks and fighter jets, so that it can be included in the second negative import list. While the Russian media has claimed last week, that India is ready to sign a contract for 500 T-14 next-generation tanks during the upcoming visit of Russian President Vladimir Putin to New Delhi. India's inclusion of lightweight tank or medium-weight tank could directly affect Russia's plan to sell the Spritas TM and T-14 tanks to the Indian Army. India is already producing Tejas fighter jet, which means that single-engine fighters can be included to second negative import list, but might not include twin-engine fighters at this stage, as the Indian Air Force will get the acceptance of necessity for the 114mm RCA fighter jets program in April 2021. India, France and Australia have finalised their agenda, for a trilateral mechanism to focus on better coordination in the Indo-Pacific region, and the three democratic countries will support the development of smaller countries including island nations in the region, to reduce their excessive dependence on China. Even after spending millions of dollars in intense lobbying, the Financial Action Task Force has kept Pakistan in its grey list and has asked the country to swiftly implement its 27 action plan before June 2021. Pakistan's grey listing from 2008 to 2019 have resulted in a loss of $38 billion, and its continuation on the grey list means that Pakistan will not get any investment or monetary support from various international bodies. But this has not stopped Pakistan to offer a $50 million defence line of credit to Sri Lanka yesterday. Oh, my God, it's...